You better not shout, you better not cry Konami doesn't care if you've been naughty or nice Yu-Gi-Oh! Bandless Season is here What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you my Banlist predictions for the January 2020 format. Now yesterday I brought to you an episode of Banlist Roulette, which is more of a satirical approach to the Banlist predictions, letting the wheel of the Banlist randomly determine what will get hit. But today we're gonna to be taking more of an analytical, more serious approach and actually discussing what I feel will get hit. Now keep in mind, this is what I feel like will happen, not necessarily what I want to happen, because I feel like those are two separate issues. Obviously there can be some overlap, but nonetheless, it's still something that we need to definitely discuss because, you know, we're having the ban list in only a few short weeks and there is a lot to talk about. So before we get into it though, I do want to let you guys know that I actually just launched a new shirt over on Teespring, which you can see down uh, below the video or click the link in the video description. I call it my everyday I'm summoning shirt. Just a nice new design I'm trying out. There's going to be availability in uh, t-shirts, long sleeves, as well as sweatshirts. If you're still looking for a gift for a Yu-Gi-Oh player in your life, it makes a nice little gift. The quality is immaculate and like I said, I really like how it came out and I really hope you guys do too. So again, links are in the description if you want to purchase one of these shirts and I really appreciate your guys' support. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. As always, we're going to start off with the band cards and I think the band card that I think a lot of people are kind of talking about at the moment is Orchestrated Babel. Babel is a very interesting hit to Orcus for several reasons. Now when we did Bandless Roulette yesterday, we talked about a lot of different Orcus cards, right? We talked about Dingirsu, we talked about Gal Atea. We talked about Harpoor. And then we also ended on Babel. But I think Babel is the most logical hit, and I'm going to go ahead and explain why. If you take Orcus in the context of the current game and kind of just looking at how it fares against all the other different matchups, Orcus inherently is a very powerful deck, but I don't think it does anything inherently unfair until you factor in that it can do everything that it does best on the opponent's turn as well thanks to Orchestrated Babel. And I think that's where the unfair element of Orcus comes in. You know, being able to do the stuff with Dengirsu, sending your opponent's cards away, and just being able to generate the massive advantage that Orcus is able to, that's pretty nice. But when you're able to banish Symbol Skeleton on your opponent's turn to resurrect your Dengirsu, and then you can like use Mascarena to just link off into further other things, when you're able to do all of this, when you have stuff like Long Girsu that can like send your opponent's cards away, Galatea ensuring you have Crescendo for your turn so you have protection, or giving you an orchestrated return so you can pot of greed and go like plus three on your follow-up turn yeah i think that's where it gets really ridiculous and i think banning orchestrated babble is the correct hit now one thing i want to say is i don't think we're going to get this like meteoric ban list that's going to change everything because you have to think ignition assault is coming up at the end of january and they still have to sell the new sky striker cards and again even if they were to just like massively hit all the best decks right now it really would not really shift things too much so I don't think it's in their best interest to hit everything so significantly at the moment, but it doesn't mean there aren't cards that can still be hit. Another reason why I think Babel will get hit though is because they hit a card like uh, Rank Up Magic for uh, the Phantom Knights when we're going into Outer Entity Azathoth on our opponent's turn. And so again, Azathoth during your turn, yeah, it's pretty busted, but it's not as broken as locking your opponent out from basically playing the game. And so Babel kind of has that same parallel, and I feel like this is why it makes the most logical sense. Again, feel free to debate me in the comments, but I think Babel is the most logical choice. Now, since I mentioned Sky Striker, the next card I have on the ban list is going to be Hornet Drones. Now, Hornet Drones getting banned is very interesting because by banning Hornet Drones, you pretty much take away a lot of the splash ability of the Striker engine. Now, sure, you could still play the Striker engine with stuff like Widow Anchor, Afterburner, Jamming Wave, all the other really good tools that are available in the Sky Striker toolbox. However, Drones is kind of like the best card because it represents a link to and that in itself is very powerful i mean we see sky striker orcus being the most dominant deck at the moment and if you take out the drones it doesn't really have as much potency as it did previously by taking away the splash ability of the engine in other decks while also remaining to its pure form keep in mind sky striker cards are coming out in ignition assault so i don't think they're actually gonna crucify sky striker like a lot of us may think sky striker 
Striker Rose is pretty much a replacement for Hornet drones anyway, so if you ban drones, they're just gonna get Rose, so it's not like they really lost anything in the pure deck, while in any other deck, you can't really splash the engine anymore with having the power behind Hornet drones. Now again, you might see be able to play stuff like your Afterburner, Widow Anchor, all that, but I don't think it's nearly as good if you don't have drones in the mix as well. So I think banning Hornet drones is the most um, logical opinion here, but again, feel free to debate me down in the comments. And then the last card I have on the ban list is Tempest Magician. This is more of just like a safeguard. I saw there's a Pendulum FTK deck that topped uh, the most recent YCS. And honestly, why do we even want to have FTK enablers in the game? Konami's actually done a fairly decent job in 2019 removing as many FTK enablers as possible. And so if there's an FTK that even has a remote chance of taking off, let's just get it out of the game when Tempest Magician is pretty much the card that the FTK is centralized around. That just makes sense to me. I don't know. I just feel like why even bother and let it get to that point before we have to do something about it. But moving on to the limited cards, I actually only have a couple cards on the limited section. First up is going to be Thunder Dragon Colossus. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, Thunder Dragon's in a pretty significant downturn at the moment because it hasn't really been doing well at the past several events. The one thing I'll say about that is, while that's true, I think it's only due to the overwhelming dominance of Orcus being in the current metagame. I think if you put Orcus in check, I think Thunder Dragon actually has a pretty easy rise back up to the top, and that's due in part to Thunder Dragon Colossus denying so many decks from really having a fighting chance because it's so oppressive, preventing opponents from searching, it has the built-in protection. And the thing is, even with Colossus at one in the OCG, as well as other hits to the deck as well, I think they have like only one Hawk in addition to that, the deck is still tier one, even with all the other similar decks that we have here, Salomon Great, Orcus, Striker, all of that. So clearly the deck can do just fine with a lone Colossus. So I think that if Orcus takes a very significant hit, Thunder can just come back up out of nowhere, and so I feel like Thunder just has to be checked. It's still one of the most represented decks of the format, and I don't want people to think just because it's not seeing high representation in Top Cut that the deck doesn't need addressing. I definitely think Colossus to one is a pretty safe hit. It's healthy, and it doesn't make Thunder unplayable by any stretch of the imagination. And then the second card, and the last card on my limited list is Saryuja. Now you guys might be thinking, Saryuja hasn't really seen a lot of play since like Danger Thunder format, where just being abused into oblivion. And that's exactly why I feel like this card should go to one. Saryuja is just begging to be abused once again by any deck that can just swarm the field with monsters. And yeah, we do have stuff like Nibiru now that is a check on these decks' power. However, I just think that Saryuja is just a card. It's a very strong and powerful card, but in multiples is when the card starts to get really abusive and just utterly degenerate. But at one, I think it's perfectly fine. We've seen the power of Saryuja in multiples in the past, and I don't know why anyone would want to relive it. And in a lot of times, it's actually in the instance of FTK decks. So let's just completely remove it from the equation, put it to one. It's just a safeguard for the betterment of the game. And I don't really think anyone would complain about it. Only people are using like one Saryuja at the moment now anyway. But if there ever does come along a deck that can abuse multiples, having it at one would safeguard against that. Now moving on to the semi-limited list. Longtime fans of the channel know my personal feelings about the semi-limited list. I think it should just be eradicated completely because having a card at two is just very odd, except for like very, very few niche instances where it like kind of makes sense, like Necroface, I suppose. I don't know, even if Necroface is a three, I don't even think that would matter. But nonetheless, I think there's actually one card in particular that makes sense going to the semi-limited list in the context of the overall uh, meta, and that is Sky Striker Mobile engage. Now, you have to remember, they can't ban engage outright completely because they still need to sell cards in Ignition Assault for the Sky Striker support. So, with that in mind, what's the next best thing? Well, if you put engage to two, this actually is a good hit to the deck. It still allows it to be played in its pure form in tandem with a banning on drones, but it doesn't kill the deck outright completely. By hitting the deck's consistency, it's still going to be a very powerful deck, and we've seen this from the results in the OCG, but it's not going to be the powerhouse that it is now, it minimizes the chances of you going engage into engage into engage. It makes it less splashable into other decks as well if they don't hit Hornet Drones. Because if you only have two copies of engage, yeah, it's still a very powerful card. But are you really going to splash a couple Sky Striker cards just for two engages? I feel like you have to make a much heavier decision if that were the case. Engage going to two just kind of makes sense. I think putting it at one is too significant of a hit to hurt the deck's consistency. But having it at two 
kind of just feels right. Again, you guys can feel free to debate me down in the comments, but it's worked on the OCG so far, so I think the TCG can definitely take a lesson. There is one more card I put on the semi-limited list, and again, I don't really like putting cards here, but again, this is something that Konami has had a trend of doing, which is why I think they're more likely to do this than just put it straight to three. It's a little bit of a risk, but I don't really think it would matter in the grand scheme of things. Necroz of Unicor. Now, Unicor is a card that a lot of people have been talking about to come back, and if you've noticed over the past several lists, Necroz has been getting more and more of its cards back, and I think Unicor would be the next one in line to start coming off of the list. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think because they just put Shurit to three, Necroz sees like some play. It's not like, you know, tier one by any means, but it's at like the rogue level. People experiment with it. Just putting Necroz of Unicor to two is, again, it's like this quarantine zone where people can kind of see is this too good? I don't really think it is. Like, I don't think two Unicor is really going to convince people to start playing Necroz, but who knows, right? If it's going to make a rogue deck slightly more viable, then I say we bring it back. Now, wrapping up this video is the Unlimits. Now, first and foremost, I'm just going to throw out Dark Arm Dragon and Damage Juggler. I think both these cards are free and clear to go to three. No one has played these cards since they've moved to two, and I think it's perfectly okay if they get Unlimited. The thing is, it's like inadvertent should also because remember, Clown Shit All was a thing, and Dark Arm Dragon, you know, Dark Synergy, I guess. So, like, you know, put them to three. No one's really going to care. I think they're at three in the OCG, and again, it's perfectly fine. Now, there are a couple interesting cards I have on here. The first of which is actually Spiral Gear Drone. Now, the reason I have this on here is because in the next Legendary Duelist set, we're supposed to be getting Magician Souls, which is indirect Spiral support, and actually boosted Spiral to be a competitive contender in the OCG. I wouldn't be surprised if we got this Unlimit because, again, it doesn't make Spiral at the top of the tier list by any means, but it makes Spiral a more formidable threat down in the Rogue tier category. And, again, if it helps pushes the sales of the new Legendary Duelist set, I mean, I think that's probably the least powerful of the Spiral cards to come to Unlimited, and I could kind of see it happening. Like, Quick Fix and Resort, I think, are way too powerful, but Drone... Yeah, Drone kind of makes sense if you were going to pick one Spiral card to get some inadvertent support from the new Magical Hero set. The second card I want to talk about, or I guess the fourth, since I already talked about Dark Arm and uh, Damage Juggler, is uh, Trickstar Light Stage. I think Light Stage is free and clear to go to three as well. The reason this was at one was solely due to the fact that Orcus and uh, Nightmare Mermaid existed, and Light Stage was a one card combo, and not to mention it also froze a back row in the process. But Light Stage, I think now that Mermaid's Band can go back to three, I think Trickstar would have a very interesting place in this metagame as yet another deck that could compete, and since we already have such a wide variety of uh, diversity of different decks at the moment, why not, right? Let's just throw Trickstar into the mix as well and see what people start to experiment with it. And then the last card I want to discuss in the Unlimited section is uh, maybe a bit of a controversial one, but I have Pantheism of the Monarchs going to three. We have literally every other card in the Monarch deck at three aside from Pantheism, and you know what? Let's just open the floodgates and put it out there, because you know what? I think it's been enough time that Monarchs are just well past their prime. The thing is, when it comes to Monarch, is it's so fragile. It honestly bricks and you lose more to yourself than your opponent, but the fact that there's so many different forms of interaction during your opponent's turn, the deck is so fragile and susceptible to hand traps and disruption that I don't think it's the powerhouse that it used to be. So again, let's just get another rogue deck out there that people can experiment and have fun with, and I think it's going to be perfectly okay. I don't really think anything could go wrong. Yeah, Domain's kind of annoying, but you know what? If it's just a rogue deck, let people enjoy it for what it is. So, guys, that's going to wrap up my ban list predictions. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about your thoughts on the January 2020 ban list. I'd really love to hear your thoughts and get a discussion going on what we think is the most healthy steps moving forward, given the fact that we know there are still sets that Konami has to sell, and there will be some, you know, considerations to look forward to as we go into the new year. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching the video be sure to like the video as always subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content and if you found this video informative consider supporting me on patreon or becoming a youtube channel member because just by showing your support in any way that you can you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content so thanks so much again we'll see you next time